Hello viewers, we are going to taking you through the story of A Level Physics Paper 2 and this video we're going to talk about resistivity and temperature coefficient of resistance. So this topic is this subtopic is under current electricity and is suitable for students in both senior five and senior six offering physics as part of their combination. So before we start, let's first look at the course outline of this paper. So physics paper 2 is divided into four parts. The first part is geometrical optics, where two questions come from these topics and a student must answer one. Next part is physical optics, or what we call waves, and two questions come from these topics and a student must answer one. The third part is electrostatics and electricity where three questions come from these topics. And the fourth part is magnetism and alternating current where three questions come from these topics. So it is up to you to choose. You can choose to answer two from here and one from here to make the five questions. Or you answer one from here and two from here to still make the five questions. Any option is okay. So now the calculations of electricity we have so far done. The first one which is arrangement of resistors, the second one which is potential divider rule, and now we are on this third one which is resistivity and temperature coefficient of resistance. So in this channel we are interested in the calculations but the full notes are available in this book which is Mastering Elevator Physics Paper two which contains notes, worked examples and trial questions on all the topics in physics paper 2. So if you need a copy you can contact the author on this end of these two contacts or your WhatsApp using this first one. We also have other books for example if you do if you offer physics then you need three books to be to have complete notes, that is physics paper 1, mastering level physics paper 1, that they know so mastering level physics paper 2, and topical question bank. All the three are vital. If you also offer principal math, you need three books, that is mastering level math paper 1, mastering level math paper 2, and also topical question bank. But if you offer only if you offer subsidiary math, then you only need one book, which is Mastering A Level Subsidiary Mathematics. The rest are for all level. This is all level physics, all level physics, and all level math. So we shall start our topic of resistivity and temperature coefficient of resistance. So these are two parts. We are going to start with this first one, temperature coefficient of resistance, because knowledge of this will be used under resistivity. So by definition, Temperature coefficient of resistance, or what we call TCR. In short, you can brief, abbreviate this as TCR. So TCR of a material is the fractional change. Note this word, we shall see what it means, but it has to be the fractional change in resistance at zero degrees Celsius for every degree Celsius rise. In temperature, those three keywords are needed, fractional change, then the temperature at zero degrees Celsius, and also for every degree Celsius rise in temperature. Now, here what we know is that for a conductor, when you hit, remember, temperature affects resistance of a conductor. There are three things which affect resistance. One is the length of the conductor, two is the cross-section area, and the third one is the temperature. So when temperature changes, resistance changes. 
Now this temperature coefficient of resistance is what enables us to get the temperature to get sorry to get the resistance of a wire or conducting wire at any temp given temperature provided you know the resistance at zero degrees Celsius and the temperature coefficient of that material. So we shall see that under calculations. The SI unit of TCR is per Kelvin or per degree Celsius. Why? Because this one, it is fractional change. It is a fraction, meaning it has no unit. The, but we also, then we have this, that for every degree rise in temperature. So that is where this SI unit is coming from. Per degree Celsius or per, per Kelvin. Because any change in temperature... Whether it's in degrees or in Kelvin, it will be the same. So what we are going to do, we are going to get a relationship or derive an equation which involves these three parameters. One is alpha, which is TCR. Next is temperature rise. Of course, the rise means from zero degrees Celsius up to that very temperature. Then the resistance at zero degrees Celsius and resistance at any at other temperature theta, which is this. Therefore, in deriving, we need to know what this word fractional change means. So fractional change in resistance at zero degrees Celsius means that you get the change in resistance over the resist initial resistance or original resistance, which is the resistance at zero degrees Celsius. That is what this word fractional change in resistance means. But there is also this word for every degree rise in temperature. Therefore, you shall come as that fractional change in resistance per degree rise in temperature will be this divided by the rise in temperature. Remember, the initial temperature was zero degrees. And the new temperature is theta. Therefore, theta minus zero gives you theta. That is why you are seeing us putting theta here. The next is to remember that that fractional change in resistance per degree rise in temperature denotes TCR. So we are going to equate this to our TCR. Then from there, next is to rearrange. If I bring this theta this side, I'll come up with this step. Then also, when I come up with this step, I'll remain with this at this side. But I can also take this on this side. So I'll come up with this step. Our aim is to make R theta the subject. So what I'm going to do, take this one this side to come up with this step. And from there, I realize that R naught or R resistance at zero degrees Celsius is common, so I can factorize it out. When I factorize it out, I'll come up with an equation which is very, very vital. So this equation means if you know the resistance at zero degrees Celsius, you know the temperature coefficient of resistance, then you can get the resistance at any temperature, which is theta. So now shall go, we shall see how we can use the equation you have derived to answer some of the questions. So question one came from your name. 2005, paper two, question 8C. And it says, a coil of wire has resistance this at 20 degrees Celsius and this at 60 degrees Celsius. Calculate its TCR. So first of all, we know that this is the resistance at 20 degrees Celsius, meaning R20 is 30. Then this is the resistance at 60 degrees Celsius, meaning R60 is 34.5. Therefore, you come and quit and write our equation. Then we substitute. So when I substitute for R60, I'll come up with R0 plus, in brackets, 1 plus 60 alpha, where there is theta, you put 60. 
that is one equation then another one substitute for r20 i'll come up with r0 plus in brackets 1 plus 20 alpha now these will be two equations so they they, they will be easily sold simultaneously by dividing so when i divide this first equation with equation 2 i'll come up with this line then from there i'm going to substitute r60 is this and r30 is this then also this r0 can cancel now from at this step i think realize that we only have one unknown so the next thing is to look for a way of making alpha the subject so when i cross multiply i'll come up with that line open brackets i'll come up with that line collect like terms i'll come up with that and lastly make alpha the subject remember this unit we said it can be per kelvin or per degree rising temp in per degree celsius so any of the two si unit is okay and it is advisable to write your answer for tcr in scientific notation Then question 2 came from your NEB, 2005, paper 2, question 9D, and it says, The resistance of a nichrome element of an electric fire is this, at 20 degrees Celsius. When operating on a 240 volt supply, the current flowing through it is 4.17 amps. Calculate the steady temperature reached by the electric fire if the TCR of nichrome is this. So that means that when you supply this voltage and this current, temperature rises. Because we all know that current increases increases drift velocity which causes temperature because of the energy gained by the electrons so first of all you know this equation which we've already derived therefore r20 is this so r20 will be given by that where there is theta we substitute for 20 we substitute and put there 20 but we know that r20 is 50.9 so we'll come and substitute and we also know that TCR or alpha is this. So I'll come and substitute. When I do that, you will realize that it is only R0, which is the unknown. So my aim is to look for a way of making it the subject. And I'll come up with this as the resistance. Therefore, when now operating at 240 volt, it means that the resistance at that voltage will be given by V over R, V over I. So by now I think you know this formula, this equation, V is equal to I R. Like that. So, but I want to make to get R. So when I make it the subject, this I has to go this side to come V over I. Now the voltage is known and the current is known. So when I divide the two, I'll come up with this as the resistance at that temperature for steady current. Therefore, recall that this R theta is given by that. And from there, I'm going to substitute R theta, then substitute for this, substitute for this, and this temperature is not known. But the good thing is that it is the only unknown. Therefore, what our aim is to make it the subject. So when I open brackets, I'll come up with that. Collect like terms, I'll come up with that. And make theta the subject. And that will be the answer. So it is okay to give your answer to two decimal places. So that was TCR. Now we also need to know what electrical resistivity is because these two are combined to get to get a flavor of the question set in UNEB. So electrical resistivity of a material is divided is defined 
as the resistance across opposite faces of a one meter tube. One meter tube of a material at a given temperature. Not this word, one meter tube. It is needed. So the SI unit of resistivity is ohm meter, which is in symbolically is expressed as that. So you also need to write the exp to write the expression relating resistance, cross section area, length, and electrical resistivity. That expression we shall there's no need to derive it. So what we shall do, we shall just write it that electrical resistivity is equal to resistance times cross section area over length. And I think if you remember very well, these were the factors area and these were the factors that affect resistance over material. So this expression will be used more frequently, but also there's something you need to remember is that since resistance of a material is proportional to its resistivity because if these two are constants then this will be proportional to this therefore since they are proportional it implies that from this the very expression can also be used for resistivity where there is a resistance you can put resistivity and the expression will be okay now this is the reason why we began with tcr because TCR is also under resistivity. So this row, this symbol is called rho. So rho naught is resistivity at zero degrees Celsius, and rho theta is resistivity at theta degrees Celsius. This one we all know it. It is TCR. So with that, we shall go through some of the questions. So question one. Came from your neb 2004 paper 2 question 8 a roman 2 roman 3 and says the resistivity of milled steel is 15 exponent negative 8 ohm meter at zero degrees Celsius, and its temperature and its tcr is temperature coefficient or temp now this is temperature coefficient of resistivity is 50 exponent negative 4 per Kelvin. Calculate the resistivity at 60 degrees Celsius. So first of all, we shall code the, the formula and then substitute because we have two resistivities. There is this temperature and also this temperature. So rho 60 is given by this, rho 20 is given by this. Those are two equations, we have to solve them simultaneously, and the easiest method is to divide the two. So when I divide, I'll come and substitute. Rho 60 is what I want. Then rho 20 is given. This, because this is 60, I'll put 60 here. Because this is 20, I'll put 20 here. Now this alpha is given in the question. So I'll come and substitute for alpha here and here. When I do that, you realize that it is only this which is the only unknown. Therefore, my aim is to look for a way of making it the subject. So when I use a calculator, the whole of this will give me this, and the whole of this will give me this. Then I will make this the subject by taking this one this side so 1.3 over 1.1 times this gives you this as the resistivity at 60 degrees Celsius that was question one what about question two question two came from your neighbor 2009 paper 2 question 8d and it says an electric heater consists of 5.0 meter of nichrome wire of diameter this 0.58 millimeters when connected to a 240 volt supply the heater dissipates 2.5 kilowatt and the temperature of the heater is found to be 1020 degrees Celsius 
if the resistivity of nichrome at 10 degrees Celsius is this. Calculate Roman 1, the resistance of nichrome at 10 degrees Celsius. And Roman 2, the mean temperature coefficient of resistance of nichrome between this and this. So first of all, you know that the length is 5 meter, diameter is this, but we have to convert 2 meters, so we multiply by 10 to the power negative 3. Resistivity is this. Therefore, the resistance at 10 degrees Celsius will be given by R10 equal to rho A, rho L A. Remember, this one was equal to A R over L, so when I make R the subject, it will be rho L over A. Now, this cross-section area is pi d squared over 4. But it's a reciprocal, that's why you see 4 up and pi d squared down. Therefore, when I substitute, 4 is here, rho is here, l is here, pi is here, and d is here, but it's squared. So when I use a calculator, I'll come up with this as the resistance at 10 degrees Celsius. Roman 2, Roman 2, they wanted the mean temperature coefficient of resistance of nichrome between 10 degrees Celsius and 1020 degrees Celsius. So first of all, the PD is that, and the power is this, so change to watts by multiplying by 10 to power 3. This is an expression of power. Power is equal to V squared over R. I think you remember that in all levels. So when I make this the subject, I'll come up with this expression. Then I substitute for V and for power to come up with this as the resistance at this temperature. But R theta is equal to R naught plus R naught in brackets one plus alpha theta. Therefore, what I will do, I have two temperatures. I will substitute. I will divide the two because I have two simultaneous equations. So sub divide to solve the two simultaneous equations. So this is this. It was given here, and this is this. It was got here. Now the good thing is that now I have only one unknown here. Therefore I'm going to cross multiply. Open brackets. Collect like terms and then make alpha the subject. And that would be the TCR they wanted. Then question 3 came from your name. 2006 paper 2 question 8C. It is added, meaning some things were removed and others were added. So, the temperature coefficient of the TCR of two wires A and B of diameters this and this are this and that. So, this is for this diameter and this is for this diameter and this diameter is for A and this diameter is for B. So if the ratio of their resistances at this is this, calculate the ratio of their resistances at 100 degrees Celsius. Then Roman 2, electrical resistivity at 100 degrees Celsius, given that they have the same length. So this is the resist, this R A O is the resistance of wire A at 0 degrees Celsius, R naught B is the resistance of wire B at 0 degrees Celsius. We are told that their ratio is 1.5. Then this is the TCR of wire A. 
and this is the TCR of wire B. Those were given the question. Now they want the ratio of the ratio at 100 degrees Celsius. So what that means that when temperature is 100, it means that where there is alpha, we put there 100. Where the alpha, we put there 100. The ratio of the resistance at 100 degrees Celsius will be good by dividing. So when I divide this over this, I'll come up with this divided by this. Now when I do that, you realize that this one can be separated it is this one alone and also these ones can be put alone as seen here. The reason is because I already know the whole of this is equal to 1.5. So I'll come and put where there is this, I'll put there 1.5. And also where there is alpha A, I'll put there this. Where there is alpha B, I'll put there this. So from there, the next thing is to use a calculator. When I use a calculator, this will give me 156 over 103. That is a fraction, meaning that in ratio form, it is 156 to 103. So this is the ratio they wanted in Roman 1. Now we shall go to Roman 2. Roman 2, they said, calculate the ratio of their electrical resistivities at 100 degrees Celsius, given that they have the same length. So first of all, we are given the diameters, so we are going to get the ratio of their diameters. dA over dB is, dA was this, dB was this, so it gives you 1.5. Then the ratio of their length, they said it is the same, meaning the ratio is 1. The ratio of their resistances at 100 degrees Celsius is this. We have got it. So that means that the ratio of the cross-section area will be given by this. Because remember, area of wire A is pi d A over pi d squared over 4. And this one also pi d squared over 4. Now, this division sign can become application sign when this one is a reciprocal, as you can see it here. Then from there, I realized that this and this cancels, then also this and this cancels. So I'm going to remain with this and this, which is here. But the good thing I already know that this ratio is 1.5, therefore, 1.5 squared will give me this, and this will now be the ratio of this cross-section area. Now we shall go to what they want, the ratio of their resistivity. So this one, this resistivity, this should be 100, so this resistivity is this. And this resistivity is this. So, so we shall do the same. This division becomes multiplication sign when this is a reciprocal, as you can see it here. Then from there, we're going to try to rearrange area alone. So this and this will be separated to give you this. Then this and this will be put alone to give you this. Then this and this will be put alone to give you this. After that, we shall remember that this one is equal to 2.25. So I'll come and put it here. Then I remember that this one is equal to 156 over 103. So I'll come and put it here. Then I remember that this one, because it is equal to 1, it implies that even their reciprocal is 1. So that's why I'm putting 1 here. So when I use a calculator, I'll come up with this fraction. So the, it has to be a fraction here. After that, we shall now say that the required ratio will be 351 to 103, and there are no units in ratios. So basically, that is what they wanted in this question. Question 4 came from UNEB 2000, paper 2, question 8c, and it says, Two wires, A and B, have lengths which are in the ratio 4 to 5. 
and diameters which are in the ratio 2 to 1, and resistances which are in the ratio 3 to 2. If the wires are arranged in parallel, and the current of one ampere flows through the combination, find Roman 1, the ratio of their resistivity, then Roman 2, the current through the wire. So we are saying edited because here they are asked for the ratio of their resistance. Yet in the question, they are already given you the ratio of their resistance. So what we did, we edited the word resistance and put their resistivity. So first of all, we shall write what is given. The ratio of lengths is that, ratio of diameters is that, inflection form, ratio of resistances is that, and the total current is 1 ampere. So the ratio of their cross-section area will be given by that. So you already know that this one is the same as this squared. And this ratio is 2 over 1, so 2 over 1 squared gives you 4. And the ratio of their resistivity will now be given by that. So by now we already know that this one is equal to this. We already saw that in the previous question. So next is to substitute this ratio. The ratio of the cross-section area is 4. We have got it. The ratio of resistance is 3 over 2. The ratio of lengths. So this was R A wire A over wire B. And this was and here they want YB over YA, so we have to get the reciprocal of this, which is that. So when I can show it, I'll get this in fraction form. Therefore, the required ratio will be 5 to 2. There was Roman 1. Roman 2 says find the current through wire A. So here we're going to make a certain sketch for you to easily understand that. So these are the two wires, wire A and wire B. Then parallel, that's why they have this junction where current divides and this junction where current recombines. Total current was one ampere. The one which goes this side is IA, the one which goes this side is IB. Now they want the current through wire A, so they want IA. Now from this, we know that the ratio of their resistances is, is this, implying that when I cross, make this one, when I take this on this side, I'll come up with RA equal to 1.5. 1.5 is 3 over 2 multiplied by RB. So I've made RA the subject. Therefore, the effective resistance of wires in parallel, these are two resistors in parallel, so it will be product over sum. But I know RA is this, that is why this RA is substituted with this, and also this is substituted with this. Then from there, I realize this and this gives you RB squared, this and this, but this is a, a plus, meaning 1.5 plus 1 gives you 2.5 by this RB here, and also there's this 1.5 here. So 1 RB will cancel with this square, and then this divided by this gives you 0 0.6. So here to remain 1 RB, so we get 0 0.6 RB. Now this R1 is the effective resistance for power combination. Therefore the PD across the power combination, remember PD will be the same. So PD across the power combination will be given by V equal to I R1, where R1 is the combined resistance. So I is 1 ampere. And the total resistance is 0 0.6 RB. So when I apply, I come up with 0 0.6 RB still as my PD. So now that I've got PD across this wire, 
and I know its resistance, I can get its current. Therefore, current through wire A is equal to PD across that wire over the resistance of that wire. So PD is this, resistance is this. This RB will cancel, and this over this will give me 0 0.4 ampere. And that will be the current they wanted. Then question 5 came from your neb, 2004, paper 2, question 9D, and says, A wire of diameter D, length L, and resistivity rho forms a circular loop, as shown here. A current enters and leaves the loop at points P and Q. So here it enters and here it leaves, as shown in the figure below. Show that the resistance R of the wire is given by the expression this. So now this, this is one wire but has been split here because at this point current splits and one goes this side, one goes this side. Because current splits, it implies that the, these are two resistors in parallel. One with a length x, another one will have the remaining length which is L minus x. So using this expression that R is equal to rho L over A, we are using capital L because small l is already in the question. Okay, so we're using this expression. A is this, but it's reciprocal. That's why you see 4 over pi d squared. Then when we combine the two, I'll come up with this expression as the expression for resistance. That means that the resistance of R of where x with the length x will be given by this. Where there is capital L, we shall put their x. Then the resistance of the remaining part, which is L minus x, where there is capital L, we shall put their L minus x. So the two wires are... So the two, the, the, these two wires are in parallel. Therefore, when I combine this and this in parallel, I'll use the special case of product over sum then I will substitute. So when I substitute, this Rx is this, this is the numerator, and this R this is that. The denominator you still substitute by this plus. So when I combine these two, I'll come up with this. And when I add these ones, I'll have to get LCM. So let's see this. Here the LCM is pi d squared. It is the same for both, meaning that I'll just get this, put it here, and this, put it here. But remember, there's still a division here, meaning that we have to change to multiplication sign by getting, getting the reciprocal of this, which is here. Another thing you realize that what we have done here, for, for rho is common in both, so I've pulled it out. To remain with here, I remain with only x, and here I remain with L minus x. Now here, x minus x cancels remain with L alone, but there's this four row which is here, numerator is that. This side, it has remained the same. Then next you realize that this 4, the 16 divided by 4, you remain with 4, which is here. Then also, this row, we reduce this row to remain with only one row. Then also, this pi, we reduce this pi to remain with one pi. And also this pi, this d squared, we reduce this d to power 4 to remain with d squared here. Okay, then from there, we shall just combine to get the required expression. If you look at this question, this very expression is what we have got here, meaning we have got what they wanted.
so that brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching and be reminded the next video will be on emf and internal resistance of a cell so if you are not yet subscribed please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video has been uploaded and also if you know of any student who is not yet on this platform please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like facebook and whatsapp such that you can all benefit ours a family